Joe Biden starts things off by insulting the previous book in the series. It has a dumb premise, a bad cover, and nothing happens in the first six chapters. He gives it zero stars out of five. I thought that was a hilarious note to start the book on. I laughed out loud, but when I told my wife, she didn't laugh at all. She gave the joke a zero out of five as well. Argofunk book review, Argofunk book review. Joe Biden is at an economic forum in Chicago in order to meet Caruso, a former rapper who's now a social justice activist. Because if Joe Biden doesn't get endorsed by a particular rapper, who knows what chaos could result? Joe meets today's victim, Sean Denton. He is in a rising star program. They only talk for one page, but Sean really likes Joe's book. So Joe is going to put his life on the line for this stranger multiple times. Barack Obama is there wearing a tan suit. A hideous tan suit, which is so ugly, it makes Joe want to barf. I can't believe they put that monstrosity of a suit on this book's cover. Were they trying to punish readers? No wonder this book never got a sequel. Brock lost his beloved Blackberry. They use a computer to track it. It's in a freight yard on the south side of Chicago. That's where Sean works. Joe goes there to discover Sean was shot twice in the back. Mayor Rahm Emanuel shows up. Joe hates Rahm for vague reasons. I hope they're friends in real life. Rom has a mean enforcer named Benny Bento Box Pulaski. Bento Box tells Joe to drop the case, and he threatens to beat Joe up if he doesn't say why he was at the crime scene. Rather bold of Bento Box to threaten the vice president in the mayor's limo. Maybe that's why Joe doesn't like Rom. Joe and Barack go to the hospital where they meet Pastor Brown. He says Sean's only relative is his aunt. Her contact info is in Sean's application in the Obama offices. You'd think President Obama would have access to the Obama offices, but apparently he doesn't. Well, at least he can't go inside without his wife finding out. So Joe is forced to break into the Obama offices by crawling through a secret underground tunnel network. He crawls past rats and dangerous pipes. He gets Sean's info, but he gets lost on the way out. He accidentally ends up at a bookstore, where a woman mistakes him for a creep and assaults him with a children's book. Joe goes to see Sean's aunt, which ends up being a dead end. Then he goes to see Rom, who's in a sauna with Barack. Joe enters the sauna without a towel, to the horror of everyone else there. Rom says the murder weapon came from a shipment of guns, which was stolen from a train three weeks ago. Barack's Secret Service agent collapses from the heat. They cool him down by taking off his pants, which reminds Joe of a fun time back in his 1930s prep school. Barack promises to get Joe some ice cream if he doesn't tell the story. But then they don't get any ice cream! He's a gosh darn liar! Barack takes Joe to a shady record store. The owner agrees to talk about the shooting, if Barack tells him the truth about aliens. Our heroes learn the guns were taken by an unknown gang. They found the guns by total accident. To learn which gang got the guns, they have to visit a speakeasy. Uh, you know, I probably can't describe this part of the book without the video being flagged by YouTube for inappropriate content. Let me just say, there are special dancing women who provide services for police officers. Joe and Barack are taken as hostages until the woman in charge recognizes them. She tells them the killer's from a gang called the Crooks. Pastor Brown agrees to set up a meeting between the Crooks and the police. Joe makes an idiot of himself by accusing Pastor Brown of being the gang leader. He breaks into Pastor Brown's secret storeroom, only to find it's filled with food from a food drive. Joe is ashamed of his mistake. He takes a plane out of town when he sees online pictures. Caruso used to be part of the crooks. Joe demands they stop the plane, but again, he makes a mess out of everything. He accidentally makes it sound like he's hijacking the plane. The pilots panic and almost crash into a fence. 
Joe rushes back to the economic forum. Bento Box is waiting for him. Joe tries running away, and Bento Box is hit by a car. With his dying words, Bento Box says Caruso is the culprit. Joe breaks into the building, but the elevators have keypads, so he's forced to walk up 25 flights of stairs to get to the Obamas. He makes it about halfway, and then he collapses unconscious, because going upstairs is too much work. Our hero, everyone! Michelle Obama wakes Joe up and gets him a clean suit. She has a spare suit handy, because she's trying to convince Barack to change out of that tan-colored monstrosity. Barack has bad news. The culprit stole Sean from the hospital. The GPS on the stolen wheelchair says it's in Lake Michigan on Caruso's yacht. They convince a tour guide to take them out, and there's a minor skirmish with two gangsters. This takes Barack's secret service agent out of the picture, so our heroes can be in real danger for the finale. They get onto the yacht, where they find Caruso is dead. The real culprit is Bento Box, who's not dead. He ordered the gang to kill Sean, because Sean tried to tell the police about the stolen guns. The Coast Guard shows up out of nowhere. Bento Box orders Joe to get rid of them. Because, of course, the criminal mastermind puts a spunky detective in charge of maintaining their cover. Joe gets rid of the Coast Guard with a fake story about a fax machine. Barack grabs a grenade from the stockpile of weapons. He hopes to use it to escape, but Bento Box steals it. Bento Box is attacked by Caruso. Apparently he's not as dead as Joe thought. Joe saves everybody's lives by grabbing the grenade and throwing it away as far as possible before it explodes. Luckily, Joe thought ahead. The fake fax number he gave to the Coast Guard was actually Michelle's cell phone number. She figured out what was going on and chartered a police helicopter to save them. That's the cover scene. We end with a joke scene where a roving reporter learns what happened. He says he's going to turn the story into a book. Joe laughs, ha ha ha, no one would read that. The end. Post book follow up. If you like political comedies, I would recommend buying my cat president video games. You help six talking cats become president, and of course you fall in love. The link to them is in the description. This book is definitely an improvement upon the first book. The first book had a hard time juggling the comedy and the drama. This book avoids that problem by doubling down on the comedy. Joe is no longer a hard-boiled detective who hates life. He's more of a plucky underdog with a passion for justice. It's not all comedy. The book has its serious moments, especially when reflecting on how terrible life is for the people in the south side of Chicago. But it's more light-hearted than the first book for sure. Joe's frequent asides have a lot more punchlines. Last book, they have a lot more biographical information. Joe has more gaffes in this book. He and Barack no longer swear. So yes, this book takes itself a lot less seriously than the first one did. The book plays around a lot with the idea of Joe Biden running for president in 2020. He doesn't know for sure yet. In real life, Joe announced he was running in the time gap between when this book takes place and when the book was published. That's unfortunate timing. Jokes about Joe Biden as a screwball detective are a lot less funny when he's a serious candidate for President of the United States. I can only assume Joe's campaign is the reason there's not a third book in this series. While I liked this book more than the first, I thought the mystery was better in the first book. It was more focused, whereas this investigation is more comedic. I didn't like how the book pulls the dead character is secretly still alive trick twice in the big finale, but I did like the clever fax machine trick. So if you're a fan of comedy, I'd probably recommend this book. If you're more a fan of serious mystery, I'd probably recommend the first book. That's my take on the two books. Like I said, I enjoyed this book more, so I'll rate it two points higher. I give Obama-Biden mystery number two, Hope Rides Again, a 5 out of 10.